Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you about the vars function. Vars is a built-in function in Python, which means that it's always available. You can always run it. You don't need to import anything or install anything. And it's really three functions in one. And all three of these functions are really useful if you want to experiment with, play with, debug your Python environment or Python program. You're probably not going to want to use vars very much in production code, but day to day I actually use vars quite a bit. So let me show you how. And the first use for vars, let's say here, number one is going to be for getting uh, easy access to an object uh, uh, attributes. All right, well, what do I mean by that? Well, if I say here class person, so your def under init, and I'll say self first and last. I'll say self.first equals first, self.last equals last. I can say here p equals person, move in learner. Very good. And I can now say p.first and p.last. That's pretty obvious, right, to anyone who's got experience with object-oriented Python. And what I've done here is I've created a really simple class. It has three parameters here, right? Self, which is, of course, going to be assigned to our instance. First and last, which we're going to get from the user calling the class person, Ruben Learner. So this string will be assigned to first. This string will be assigned to last. And then what I do is I use the value of first and assign it to an attribute first, and the value of last assigned to an attribute last. None of that is surprising, again, to anyone with any experience with Python objects. And let's say I want to see what are the attributes that I've defined on P. Well, here's where vars really comes in handy. I can say vars of p, and I get back a dictionary, a dictionary in which the keys are the attribute names and the values are the, well, the attribute values. Now, could I have done this differently? Absolutely positively. I could have said p.dunderdict. That's another way to see this. But I just find vars to be a little nicer, a little better. It's not going behind the scenes so much. I should add that it'll only work with objects that have a dunderdict. So if you're using slots or one of those sorts of things that like tries to improve the performance of your objects, then it's not going to work. It'll blow up on you. But I use vars um, you know, when I want to sort of poke around an object, see what attributes it has. Um, I don't want to use dir because dir is going to show me, if I do here like dir of p, it's going to show me all the attribute names, but not only the attributes that are set on my object, but all the ones that are available to it also from its class and through inheritance. So if I just want to see what have I assigned to this object, I can do it like that. And what I'll sometimes do even, this is not so good for like end user stuff, but if I'm just you know, hacking around for my own things, say def dunder repr. And of course, dunder repr is one of the methods that's invoked when we want to turn our object into a string. I can say here return, I do an f string of person, and I can say here's like vars equals. And this uses the new 3.8 and onward syntax inside of an f string, where if I had an equal sign, it'll say the name of the expression equals and the value of that expression. So here I create that person again, I can say print p, and look at that, oh, I forgot to call it, haha, -ha. there we go, vars of self, that would actually help. There we go, much better, right? So what am I doing here? Every time I print p, Python looks for dunder repr. It first looks for dunder stir, but don't worry about that. It looks for dunder repr. And then because it found dunder repr, it runs it. And what are we doing? What are we doing inside this f string? We are going to return the string person comma, and then whatever we get back from this. What is this going to be? We're going to call, call vars on self, giving us back that dictionary. And then we see vars of self equals. So this is a nice handy way to just sort of see what's on my object. This is what I use for like super, super simple dunder repers on simple objects. So use number one for vars is to get the dict back from an object. Use number two for vars is kind of weird, um, but useful. I can just say vars. And so if I call vars by itself without an argument, I get the dict in, um, of all global variables. Now, what does this mean? First of all, you can see here, there are a lot of global variables, and that's in part because Jupyter is so big and like defines all sorts of stuff. But basically, um, it's a little bit of a lie that Python has variables, and especially that it has global variables. When I say x equals 100 and y equals 10, 20, 30, we think, and it's useful to think about x being a variable and y being a variable, but actually x is turned into a string, and that string is used as a key in our global dictionary, our dictionary of global variables. So if I want to, I can say here vars of x and vars of y, and we get back those values. Now, you should never actually do this in a real program. By the way, if you're calling vars like this, it's the same as saying globals. Globals actually is the function that returns this dictionary no matter what. 
But vars is kind of useful because it's always going to work and you just have to remember one thing. Um, now, could I say vars of x equals 2, 3, 4, 5? Huh, I didn't get an error. What's the value of x now? Yes, that's right. The value of x is 2, 3, 4, 5. Please, please do not do this in actual code. You should not be assigning to this dictionary. But it's kind of cool that you can, right? Yeah, I know. I know it is. All right. So use number two of vars is to get access to these global variables in this global dictionary. Now, why would I ever want to do this? First of all, it's sometimes nice to sort of know is something a global variable. What I can say now is x in vars. Yeah, it is. And is z in vars? The answer is no. So we see here that x is a variable and z or z is not a variable, a global variable at least. So let's use number two of vars. Use number three is even weirder and more esoteric. So if I say here, def my funk, I'm going to say here x. Well, actually, let's not, let's, let's, let's not use x. Let's say here a. And then we'll say here b equals 100 and c equals 10, 20, 30. And then I can say here print vars. Okay. And now I'm going to call my funk with hello. Watch what we get. It's going to print vars. Now, vars we saw before will give us a dictionary with all the global variables, but we're not getting anything even close to as big as that. We're getting something way, way smaller. In fact, if I didn't know better, I would say that I was just seeing the local variables. Well, actually, that's what we're seeing. vars inside of a function, I should use parentheses here, inside of a function returns a dict of the local variables, not the global ones. And so actually, it's just like just like the locals function. So yes, there's a globals function, a locals function, and the locals function returns a dictionary, names and values of all the local variables, and the globals function returns a dictionary, names and values of all the global variables. By the way, if you call locals outside of a function, you know what you get? That's right, you get the global variables. Yeah, Python's smarter than, than you might think. It's not going to blow up on you. And what we see here then is that A is set to hello, B is set to 100, C is set to 10, 20, 30. Now, B and C, you would sort of normally assume, oh, yeah, of course, these are local variables, duh. But A here, A actually is a parameter. And this demonstrates beyond a shadow of a doubt that, well, I mean, there are other ways to see it too, right? But basically, this shows us that A, like all parameters, is a local variable. So these are the three ways that you can use vars. Again, maybe ex with the exception of using double rep, uh, double, the, instead of using it in Dunder Repper, other than using Dunder Repper, I can't really think of too many places in production code I'd want to use it. But boy, oh boy, I use it every day in my debugging, in my just printing things out, in my exploring of objects. So use it on objects, use it instead of globals, use it instead of locals, and enjoy. I hope this was useful and interesting. If you have other questions, please get in touch with me. I'm always interested in hearing from people who are watching these videos and what you want to learn and what you want to know. You can contact me on Twitter. And don't forget, my free weekly Better Developers newsletter goes out every Monday with articles about Python. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with yet more videos about Python.